Today is the last official installment in the series on reflection. If you've been following along, you've probably noticed that calling code and other classes using reflection is a huge pain in the butt. Today, we're going to take a look at a way of taking advantage of some of the benefits of reflection without having to jump through all the hoops that reflection puts in our way. We'll do this by using interfaces. This tactic works if you know ahead of time what methods and properties your class will need but want to be able to dynamically load them at runtime. A class, uh, classic example of this would be plugins. So let's move over here to our code. And the first thing you'll see is I've added another class library, class library two, that has an interface in it called my interface. And in here I've specified uh, that anything that implements this my interface interface is going to implement the go method and is going to implement the my property set of properties. Now, what we need to do is we need to add references to class library two from both class library one and the Windows Form application. And you'll see that I've already done that in our code here. So now the Windows Form application and our original class library know about this new interface. So let's close that. We won't need that anymore. And let's go over to look this code. And you'll see the last thing, second thing I've done here is I've implemented my interface. And this lets me, allows these methods to actually override those implementations. And if we compile this code, you'll see that that all compiles correctly. So the last thing we need to do is go into our form code. And what we've done, we still need to load class library one using assembly load. And we still need to create an instance of the object. And I'm using uh, assembly create instance here, um, calling the default constructor like we did a couple of videos ago. But what we're going to do here is we're going to cast this to type interface. So we're going to declare a variable, we'll call it class class library to my interface. And let's see, my interface equals class library to my interface O. Oh. All we've done there is we've cast, um, got a variable my interface of the type that we want to do. Now we can go in and we can do my, my interface, my property equals string. Message box show my interface, my property, and then we can do my interface go. There's a message for go. And the Windows Form application will compile now. And if we run this, let's just set a breakpoint here so you can see what's going on. Click the button. So we create our object. Cast to the interface. Set the property, show the property, and call go, which remember has that message in there. So here's the message for go. And 
There's also a performance increase that we get for this because this is equivalent to, if you remember back in the COM days, uh, you had the ability to do late binding uh, or early binding on a COM object. And what we've basically done here is we've used uh, the uh, uh, assembly load and create instance call to do essentially a late bound instantiation of the object, uh, but we've used the interface to cast it back to something the compiler knows about so that everything from there on is early bound. Um, and so we, it's, it's as if the object was there all the time and the compiler and the, uh, the runtime knows exactly where to go get that information.